Welcome to the inaugural Ocean Race Europe, bringing together two high-performance offshore classes onto one course, one start line. We're racing just outside the city of Lorient, where the boats were at harbour just a few hours ago. Not quite far enough out from the city to get into full breeze. And unfortunately, it doesn't really look like we're going to get the thermal breeze kicking in, but this is going to be their first challenge. From the start line, we're going to be going through a first gate, and then it is out into the ocean and out into the wide space. So, well, the red boy, just you can see it on the bottom of your screen just a moment ago, that was the pin end of the line. And as we're looking at it at the moment, the fleet are going to be starting on a reaching start. We are inside of uh, five seconds to go. And we've got sailing Poland down at the bottom with Team Axe and Abel just on top of them. And those two boats have certainly been able to get through. These boats, in terms of design and in terms of setup, aren't necessarily uh, tuned for these kind of conditions. So you know, I think we're going to see a big difference in how they handle the boats. Let's face it, on the, on the 60s, with these big foils that they can't really use right now, they have uh, a crew for the first time ever. This is basically trying to get yourself into the first of the breeze, and it looks like the boat that's going to achieve that is Murpuri. They are really firing out. I mean, they are managing to stretch as well. And just looking at the numbers coming uh, off the boat, you know, they're doing nearly nine knots. The boat behind them, uh, Ambersail 2, the Lithuanians, is struggling to make seven. And as Ken was saying before, a set of new sails here obviously goes a long way if the other teams are using, you know, the sails that have been around the planet once. I mean, these boats, they've been waiting for this for a long time. We're a year behind, right, on the ocean race. So uh, I think everybody is just itching to get back out racing again, get back out on the water. Um, and they'll wait for their condition and then look out because those Amokas, man, can they put on a show when they're given the opportunity in the right condition. We've got Murpuri Racing Foundation over nine knots of boat speed. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it is pretty critical. They are leading the fleet with Childhood One, uh, just slightly to leeward, but looking pretty strong. This uh, this boat that we're just looking at at the moment, Ambersail Two, this is the Lithuanians with uh, Rokas Melavinkas as the skipper. He was on board Team Brunel for the 2014-15 race as a rookie as a youngster and one of the things that's been interesting watching the lineup for the ocean race europe is how much the young sailors have dominated the boats and been able to well maybe in one sense do the impossible find a boat find a crew find a way to lorient and get here on the start line you know ken it's it's quite nice to see those youngsters kind of coming through well, we're with Childhood One at the moment, and one of the things that's quite interesting when you look at the lineup of uh, all of the teams at the moment in terms of who's on board is this wonderful blend of names that we've known and we've known for a while and the sort of the new guys. So on board uh, Childhood One, uh, Skipper, Simeon Teampoint. I mean, uh, Simeon had, I mean, let's be honest, a bit of a rough ride, uh, certainly in the uh, last race. He was Skipper on board uh, Team Axe and Abel with a little bit of drama, shall we say, at the start, losing that skipper role, getting it back, and then performing well. Uh, you know, this boat here is quite remarkable. The Austrian Ocean Racing Project with Gerwin Jansen, he's the skipper. He's in his 30s, and everybody else on that boat is younger than 27. Every single person is in their early 20s. Uh, I think they're gonna learn a ton about these boats in this race, fully crewed, Again, hopefully pushed right to their limits. Let's see if it gets a little too windy over the next 36 hours because they all think they got to start backing off at about 30 knots of wind speed. Obviously, it's uh, sea state dependent. And it's interesting to see the more they stretch, it looks like they're getting to more breeze. This boat, Offshore Team Germany, as the fleet lies, is fourth, and I mean fourth overall. So they are, they've only got three 65s in front of them, and they're streaking out ahead of the uh, of the Amokas. Now, you know, Ken, if you're on board the Amoka right now, you know, it's a delicate art to try and get that foil that this boat isn't using to not be so much of a penalty. I guess it's just one less thing for these guys to think about. And we're moving up now uh, back towards the, the middle of the fleet right now. We've got Team Axe and Abel and uh, Offshore Team Germany just to leeward. These two boats are around about the middle of the fleet and the speeds have stabilized a little bit. As everyone's kind of been coming offshore, we've been getting into the breeze a little bit more. Eight, eight and a half knots pretty much across the entire board. And we haven't got much of our broadcast uh, 
left to run. So, Ken, I just want to bring in the scores here at this point. Um, you know, obviously, this is leg one. We've got uh, a coastal race waiting for us in Cascais. Then we've got leg two, leg three, and then a coastal race to finish. And one thing I was just wondering, Ken, uh, for you, with the scores that we've got, we're doing the high point scoring system. So if you uh, win a leg in the 65s, you're going to get seven points, and then one less all the way down. Same in the 60s, five and then one less. But when we get to the coastal races, it's only the podiums that are going to be scoring points, three for first and then down. Linked out actually is, is in a really unique situation. They have asymmetric foils. They have a different foil on starboard than they do on port. Because remember, in the Vendee, they actually broke a foil. So they have a version two foil on one side and a version one foil on the other side. Uh, all these teams are going to be learning. Another fascinating part here is, is these boats are all designed by different design teams, all five of these uh, Amokas. I think 11th Hour is one of the teams, the only teams right now pushing how hard they can um, make the configuration on the Amoka work for four sailors, four or five. And man, it's, it's a tight space down there. It's meant for one person. Who, who'd have thought that this is where our sport was going, right? It, it, but it is here and it's here to stay. All of the boats are still planning on using the self-steering or the auto, auto helm device upwards of 90% of the time because the boats were designed for that. The, the actual visibility for the helms people on these 60s is still really bad. They can't do that at all in the 65. There is no self-steering. This is how the course is set out and you can see just how much freedom is waiting for them. I mean, we've been talking about coastal racing, but this first leg in particular, it has got a lot of op options. There is going to be a lot of wide open spaces for them. It's been light here uh, in Lorient. It was a very, very tricky start, but the good thing is, is that these boats, these pedigree teams, have been able to find the best of the win. We have seen some speeds approaching around about nine knots, which is pretty good for some light winds, but they have been pushing hard. It's only the first day, it's only the first leg, and it's only the first challenge, and we're surely seeing more speed and more racing to come. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we will see you very soon.